Now, like I said, I wanted the lower right hand side of this button to be rounded. Okay. Now, in the tools, you do have a rounded rectangle option, but that is all four sides. What we're doing here is creating something that's very specific. So, using all of these techniques, it's very achievable. Let's come down instead and choose the ellipse tool. Click anywhere in our object and let's key in a size of our circle at 40 pixels on both axes, okay? Because basically what we're going to do is use a corner radius of this, so we'll have basically a 20 pixel radius on the lower right. Now once again we want to align this object into this one, and we don't want this one to move because we've already got this aligned, okay? So do make sure you select the circle and the rectangle, and then once again click on the rectangle to define that as a key object that doesn't move. Then we can come to align and say right and bottom, okay? So that now sits exactly where it needs to. Now in order to get rid of uh, basically the upper three portions of this circle, we only want to keep from here downwards, all right? We don't want to use the knife tool in this instance because it creates separate shapes as we've already seen. What we want to do here is only keep this segment and that's really where the scissors tool would come in. Now instead of using the tool, we can also use the control panel to do it for us. Let's go to the direct selection tool, deselect and reselect the corner point here on the right hand side and also hold down the shift key and select the bottom one. So these are the two points that we wish to separate from the rest of the circle, okay? Up here in the control panel, we can see the small scissors icon, and that will simply say, cut this path at those selected anchor points. So go ahead and say, okay. If we now deselect, main selection tool, reselect this side, we can pull this away and you'll see exactly what Illustrator's done. It's taken the two segments and completely separated them. So like I said, you could come over here and use the scissors tool if you want to, but I like the fact that with direct selection, you can just select something and say, please do the job for me. So very cool indeed. Now, back in the selection tool, we can deselect that object because we don't need it anymore. And now, essentially, we've got all of the items that are ready to make a shape. So remember, we want to go from this point up, across to this corner, down, join onto this, come all the way across and over here. All right. Here's an easy way to do it. What we're going to do with the direct selection tool, we're going to get rid of this top left hand point. Bear with me on this. OK. And also, we're going to highlight this bottom right hand point and get rid of that as well. If we deselect, you'll see what's left are the two corner points. That's really all we need, okay? Likewise, for this object, what I would do is I would highlight those two lower points, get rid of those. Now you can get the idea, we've got the basic construction, we have points and we have paths and we can join them all together to make one shape. So what I'm going to do is drag across the top of our line here, so I'm basically only highlighting this one point and our upper right hand point here, Command J or Control J on the PC and join those together. Likewise, let's do the same down here and join the path to the curve. Likewise, again, go across the bottom and select the corner point and this one and join those. And again, we can highlight these and join them together as well. So we now end up, if we go back to our preview mode, with a finished, perfectly aligned and perfectly sized object. Okay, we started out 140 by 50. We still have 140 by 50, but we've customized the exact shape. Now, if we decided that it doesn't want to be 50 pixels high, it wants to be 40, don't forget you've got your nudge options. But when you're using nudge in this instance, you do wish to direct select all of the relevant items. So let's say we wanted to adjust the height or the width. Let's say the width. If I grabbed only this point and this point and nudge, you can see we're going to stretch out the curve because we didn't pick up the lower point, okay? So I'm going to back up there. I would make sure that we select all three of those points. Now when we adjust the width, we're adjusting the entire shape, but our corner radius down here is staying exactly as it was, okay? So very much worth bearing in mind. Now I'm going to set that back to 140 by 50 because we can use this shape later on when we lay out our website page. So let's just go back to actual size. It looks very nice there. Seeing as we've made a confident change here to our RGB document, we should go ahead and go to File and choose Save, okay? So everything there is now up to date and saved.